Hello, welcome to ENHRP on YouTube and welcome to today's video. Recorded on a webcam to start because my recording on my normal camera didn't work. Today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of the brand new Olympus 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So let me give you some specs about this lens then. It is, as I said, 100 to 400 millimeter, f5 to 6.3, so equivalent full frame 200 to 800. Um, it does work as well with the teleconverter. So the 1.4 teleconverter will give you a 200, uh, sorry, will give you a 140 to 560 mil lens um, at f7.125, uh, f9. And then the two times teleconverter will give you a 200 to 800 millimeter f10 to f13. So it gets very, very slow. But if you're using it in bright sunlight for wildlife, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so basically that gives you a 1600 millimeter equivalent lens in a body that is just that. That is quite astonishing and one of the benefits of micro four thirds. And before the Micro Four Thirds people go, it's not small than like meh, 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 meh. Don't buy it then. If you're happy with the 75 to 300 mil lens that Olympus do, which is their cheap version lens, then go ahead. I've tried it, I don't like it. I don't like the image quality from it. I find it very, very just bleh to use. This is an alternative for people that want to use it. You want to get a, a non-pro, but really well boot, well boot, well built lens. So stop moaning about the fact that the Olympus are actually putting out new, le new lenses. And yes, I know Olympus are being sold. That doesn't mean Micro Four Thirds is dead as a system. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe a company would spend millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to buy a company and then just not do anything with it. I don't think that will happen. I may be wrong. I sincerely don't think I will be though. Anyway, let's not go on to that in this video. This does have image stabilization, three stops built into the lens. It doesn't work in conjunction with the in-body stabilization, but it does work in tandem with it. So it doesn't, unlike the pro lenses, um, they don't talk to each other, the different systems. So you can have both on at the same time. Um, you sometimes get a little bit of jittering when you're at the full vo focal length of the 400 mil. I've noticed that, but it's only a, a second or so, and then it it sorts itself out and it works fine. I've not had any issues and I've not turned the image stabilization off on the camera or the lens and it's worked fine. So that's all good. Um, it is a nine blade aperture ring. So yeah, it's not there for a bokeh. It's not a bokeh lens at all. 21 elements in 15 groups. It's got four ED, two super HR and two HR element coatings. Yeah, I don't really know what they do either. Um, one of the main things about this, that I really, really, I'm really, really impressed with is the close focusing. So this can get down to 0.17 meters. So at 100 mil, 0.17 meters, at 400 mil, 0.17 meters, with the 1.4 and the two times teleconverter, still 1.7 me at 0.17 meters. So that is extremely close. It's very useful if you're wanting to shoot insects. So you can be further away and get a really nice close focus, not full macro, but Tending macro, I think it's 0.57 magnification. Um, so yeah, it works really well for insect photography as well. I'll show you some photos in a minute. It is 1.12 kilograms, so that is 2.47 pounds, um, which is nice and light for a lens like this. Um, if you were uh, my Tamron, I want to say 100 to 500. It's a while ago since I had it, but I, I brought a second-hand Tamron lens, which is one of the massive. It's like that long, um, weighed an absolute ton, uh, added that to the camera by the end of the day, walking around the motorsport racing tracks, it was like, oh, my shoulder. So I can walk around with this all day. It's nice and light. It's, yes, it's heavy for a Micro Four Thirds lens, but what do you expect? It's a beast. Look at the size of it. It's lovely. Look at it. It's gorgeous. Um, magnesium alloy, it is weather sealed. Um, on the bottom there is a little casket on there as well so you can put it on a weather sealed camera and you get full weather sealed which is good um, it is obviously black in color magnesium alloy and um, the filter thread yes the filter thread is 72 millimeters at the front which is good i like the fact that olympus try and keep their filters sizes for their bigger lenses the same so that is 72 
and that is 72 millimeters as well the 40 to 150 so my ND filter I've got my variable ND filter um, will work with both of these it does have a tripod collar um, which allows you to mount directly on um, most modern tripods um, with the I want to say Kensington but it's not Kensington whatever that is there find out you know what it is um, so you can mount the lens directly on the tripod without having to put a plate on which is always good um, it is 206 millimeters from end to end and it is 86 millimeters at its widest point right let's have a look at some photos from this lens over the last few days and we'll uh, we'll have a look at the quality so before we look at some photos i just wanted to let you know that this video is um i say sponsored it's my podcast i'm not paying money to sponsor it but it's brought to you in association with the as yet unnamed podcast so every monday morning myself damien lee and darren antropus provide you with an hour and ish of funny entertaining silly really amusing um audio for uh, we talk about the news um we have quizzes and we do top five lists of things so we've done top five tv sitcoms top five movies top five animated movies all this sort of stuff um it's just a really good interesting and funny podcast um so if you want to listen follow all the links down below go to the as yet unknown podcast.uk that's the as yet unknown podcast.uk and you'll be able to listen and subscribe to the podcast there and look out for the now highlight videos on this channel in particular every monday morning from 6 a.m so that's the as yet unknown podcast.uk all the links down below give us a listen i don't think you'll regret it so let's have a look at some sample images then taken on the Olympus 100 to 400. So image number one we're going to look at then is this image of this um, very nice looking cow. This was shot at 400mm f6.3 ISO 200. Um, and you can just see the details that it picks up. It is so good at rendering really close detail around the eye. The hairs in particular um, just look really, really nice. Um, 400mm, this is a really sharp lens um and yes of course if you peek, pixel peep it's a little bit grainy around there but overall impressions just really really nice lens um this again this was shot at 400 mil so 6.3 iso 200 um around the nose you can see there just really really nice fine detail um the eye is sharpish not the best focus, but that's me rather than the camera. But overall, really, really good quality images coming out of this lens. Um, another cow, as you can see, pretty much the same. Uh, my favourite tree um, that I that is close by to us. Um, so you can use it for landscape. A lot of people um, don't ever think of using telephoto lenses for landscapes, but you can get some really interesting results uh, if you do it with... It just compresses the background in um, and just looks looks really good um close focusing so this is at 400 mil iso 320 um and as you can see you can easily use this to take really nice photos of flowers and insects um, and because it's at 400 mil it does blur the background quite nicely um you're obviously not going to get the same as if it's 2.8 lens etc but it just does really blur the background very nice indeed um it's a picture of a new ram we've got um it just is a very handsome chap. Um, I love the detail on this one. This is one of our uh, chickens. Um, just, it picks up really nicely. The hairs around there, the eye is nice and sharp. The feathers, individual, again, 400 mil this is shot at. So equivalent, 800 mil in full frame. Um, a possessed chicken is <laughs> how I like to call that one. Um, he does look possessed, but he's very happy. Um Again, another close-up of the eye. This was shot pretty much at its minimum distance, um, but you can see full detail resolution on all of the feathers um, all around here. And just look, look at that fine detail you get away with on there. Really, really impressed. Um, one of the few I have managed to get of the moon, I was very frustrated with a very cloudy night. Um, so yes, really annoying. Um, this one is shot at 400 mil. So this is what the moon will look like at 400 mil. I think I may have cropped this in slightly. Um, and I believe this is a... No, it's not. Um, I have taken some high-res images as well. But really nice detail on the moon. I've got to wait for it to be a really clear night um, to get some 
So this next image is um, taken with the two times teleconverter at 772 millimeter F13 ISO 500. And this is the high res version. So that's when in the camera, the um, sensor is moved ever so slightly micron movement to get a 50 megapixel um, raw file. Now, my focus is not brilliant on this. It was a very cloudy day. So mitigating circumstances, please. Um, and these are massive files. But, um, yeah, that's not cropped. So that is the size of the moon you will get when you don't crop using the two times teleconverter. Again, I need to do some proper practice on this. And finally, some more images. So this was um, 800 mil. F13 ISO 500 1 2 50th um, of a second and this was a heron that was probably about 400 meters away I would imagine um, so again you do lose some quality with the two times converter I am not surprised of that but if you were to print this out you would be absolutely fine um, it's basically physics that you put in a two times converter on um, it just is not going to be as sharp as you would without the teleconverter. That's one of the things you get. But a very usable picture taken at 800 mil, handheld. Um, so no tripod. This one is a better version, actually. I like this picture a lot. Um, it's really, really nice. Heron, I think. I think it's a heron. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, really nice picture of this. And it's, I just wouldn't have been able to get away to get that picture with that lens uh, which is the 40 to 150 it just wouldn't reach but with the extra reach of the 400 mil at the top end adding the two times you're getting a 1600 equivalent um, you can get these shots and with a bit more practice and a bit more of it you probably get even sharper shots than that but yeah really really nice images of this heron um, I did a lot this one sat in a tree um, but then you can do some interesting images like this one. So this is the light from the sun coming through on a forest floor into this leaf. Um, this was shot at 210 mil f7.1 ISO 500. And again, really nice image. I, I like it anyway. Very subjective photography, isn't it? Um, managed to get this of a spider web. There is a better version. This one in particular I like. Um, 100 mil f7.1 ISO 500. Um, just really, really nice. Focused on these tiny little bits, strands of cobweb um, without any problems whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, really, really good. And then that's at 169, so that's fine. This is at 400 mil. Um, this was tricky, upside down, having to get low, all that sort of stuff. But it did focus on the spider. So really impressed again. And then we move on to some good old swans. Yes, that's fine. Um, where's the one? Of that one there uh, I particularly like this is a tufted duck and it's tufted because it's got a little tuft there um, and then again 400 mil so 6.3 ISO 500 really really nice I really like this picture really nice quality of that I'm very impressed with this lens as I keep telling you and then we have this one of some flowers again you can use it this is 300 mil um, and you can use it for nature photography as well and then last but not least uh, this particular handsome devil here was sat on a branch um, and this, let me show you the original because I have slightly edited it, uh, 400 mil, I believe this was. Yes, it was 400 mil, um, about F8 or so. Um, and then I've edited that photo. So there you go. That was some images taken with this. Um, I will show you some more when I do the full review uh, once I get to use it in anger at the racetrack. Right, back to me to give you my final thoughts. So yeah, me again. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick video before I give you my final thoughts. This was taken um, of the moon on the cloudy night, as I said earlier. Uh, this was shot on the 100 to 400 mil lens with the EM1 Mark II.
So my first impressions of this lens are nothing but positive, if I'm honest with you. It's a um, it's a very well built lens. Um, it gives really good pitch quality, really nice detailed sharpness, even at 400 mil, which is always a concern. Um, Yes, it's not the fastest lens in the world. You will struggle on low light um, to get focus. It's hunted a little bit. Um, I've yet to try it in motorsport. I'm doing that this weekend. Um, coming and going down to Donington to, to photograph some motorbikes. Um, so I'll be using this lens in proper anger. Um, and as you heard, yet to see the moon properly as well, which is one of the other things I really wanted to try with this. Um, but overall, I'm really, really happy. It's, it's such a well-built lens. It's a quality lens from Olympus as ever. They do some brilliant lenses. And this is probably one you should be adding to your kit bag um, if you want a nice telephoto lens and you can't afford the new pro lens when it comes out, which will be most of us, unless you're a professional, I would imagine. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget the podcast information is down below, the as yet on namepodcast.uk. Um, I've got more videos coming up on here. I'm going to be reviewing, hopefully, this. This is the um, the Rode pod mic. I've also got a Go XLR on there as well, which I've got for the podcast as well. So I've got some other reviews coming up, um, but we will be releasing the podcast every week on this channel as well, six o'clock on a Monday morning. So until the next time, thank you so much for watching. I have been Ian HRP. You have been watching me on YouTube. I hope you stay safe. And until the next time, bye for now.